This is Coding Math, Episode 43, Kinematics, Part 1. I'm back after a bit of sabbatical and starting in on a new series on kinematics. Kinematics is, in general, the study of moving objects in systems of objects. But most often when we're discussing kinematics in relation to programming, we're talking about forward and inverse kinematics, and by this we usually mean specific things. We're generally referring to a system of linked parts like an articulated arm, and how this system moves and the relationship of the various segments to the whole. So we have this series of segments. Each segment can pivot on one end, and the other end is attached to another segment. In forward kinematics, we're starting at the base of the structure, manipulating the first segment by rotating it around its pivot point. This puts its end point at some new position. This is now where the next segment's base is located. Then we rotate that segment, which moves its endpoint and the next segment, and so on down the line. When we're done, we have the end of the last segment in some position determined by the rotations and lengths of all the previous segments. We can use this to simulate a controllable robot arm or make a figure that walks or runs. In inverse kinematics, we start at the opposite end. Here we're grabbing the end of the last arm and moving it into position, and the rest of the segments will need to adjust themselves accordingly. If you were to relax your entire arm and I held onto the top of one of your fingers and moved it around, the joints of your fingers, hand, wrist, elbow, and shoulder would all move to accommodate where I placed your finger. If I pulled away from you, these joints would all straighten out. If I pushed back towards you, they would all bend. So as the name inverse implies, here we start from the end point. Figure out where that needs to be and move it there, then go to the next segment up the line and adjust its position and rotation and so on, down to the first segment. I usually break down inverse kinematics into two types of systems. In one, the system as a whole is movable, and I can push or pull it all over the place. I call this dragging. In the other, the base is fixed, and I can only move the endpoint as far as it will reach from the base. When all the segments are stretched out in a straight line, that's as far as it will go. I call this reaching because if the target position is out of range, it looks like it's stretching out, trying to reach for it. We'll get into the specifics of how all these work as we go through the series. So let's start coding up some forward kinematics. Start with the basic template, and let's create a new file to create an ARM object. We'll call it ARMJS. It's going to have X, Y, length, and angle properties. And I'm going to use my preferred way of creating objects, which is a create method that uses object create. The create method will also take an x, y, length, and angle. It uses object create to make a new instance of ARM with this as its prototype. Then we'll call init on that new object passing in these parameters and return that object. In the init method, we'll just copy over these parameters to the new object. The X and Y will be the pivot point. We'll need a way to get the end point based on the position, angle, and length. So I'll create a get end X and get end Y method. These will use math cosine and math sine along with X, Y, angle, and length to compute these positions. Finally, we'll create a render method. This will take a context to draw to. We'll set the stroke style, Make the line width a bit thicker so we can see it clearly. Begin a path, move to XY, and line to the end X and end Y, following up with a call to stroke. Okay, that's all pretty straightforward. Now we can make sure that we load this in in the HTML. And now in the main script file, we can call arm.create, passing in an XY position, a length of 100, and some random angle. Now we render it, passing in the context. And there's our first segment. Now let's animate this. I'll make an angle variable set to zero, and then an update method and call it. Inside update, I'll set the angle of the arm to angle and render it. I'll add something to angle, then use request animation frame to make this an animation. And let's not forget to clear the screen at the beginning of each frame. Now the arm is moving around in circles. 
Let's make it a bit more complex by using that angle variable with math sign to get a number from minus 1 to 1, and multiplying that by some small value. We'll use this call directly to set the arm's angle. This causes the arm to oscillate back and forth. Well, cool, that's not all that complex. But that's just one segment. Let's add another. I'll create another arm, calling it Arm 2. Very creative. Its x and y will be set to the first arm's end x and end y. It will also have a length of 100 and a rotation of 0 to start. Now we just need to update its position whenever the first arm is rotated. So within update, we set its x and y once again to get end x and get end y of the first arm. And of course we need to make sure that gets rendered as well. And now we have arm 2 moving along with arm. Now that's cool, but it's not exactly right, because if arm 2 is actually attached to arm, it should be rotating along with it, unless we're specifically rotating it otherwise. So we need to take arm's rotation into account when rendering arm 2. We could do that externally, but it would be a lot better if arm 2 knew that arm was its parent. So we'll go into arm.js and add a parent property, setting it to null initially. Now in render, we're getting end x and end y to know where to draw the line. And those are calculated with math cosine and math sine of the arm's angle. What we want to do is add in the parent's angle if there is one. Actually, we need to take into account all of the parents all the way up the line. So I'll make a local angle variable and set this to this dot angle, and a local parent variable setting it to this dot parent. Now, while there is a parent, I want to add that parent's angle to the local angle variable, and then set parent to the next parent up the line. Eventually, we get to a parent that doesn't have a parent, and we'll jump out of the loop, with angle being the correct sum of all the angles. Then we'll use angle in the trig. We'll do that for both functions. Back in the main file, we'll set arm2's parent to arm. And just for visual interest, we'll give arm2 a static rotation of 1.3. Now it's actually rotating like two pieces of rotating stuff stuck together. Now we can rotate arm 2 independently. I'll just set arm 2's angle using math cosine with a bit of a different angle and a bit different range. Really just grabbing some random numbers here. Now we run this and we see arm 2 rotating back and forth, independent of arm's motion. Well, not really independent, but in addition to. Its endpoint is a complex function based on both arms' positions, rotations, and lengths. So now we can add another arm in the same way. We'll create arm 3, setting its x and y to get end x and y of arm 2, then setting its angle to some other randomly chosen values. and setting its x and y again in the loop after arm2 is positioned, and of course rendering it. Now we have a pretty crazy system. The endpoint is a result of all three of these arms' orientations. Because the numbers chosen are random and not multiples of each other, it's going to cycle for a very long time. It'll just keep going into different shapes for ages. If, however, you give simpler values for the angles like angle times 0.5 and angle times 1.5, then you'll be able to see the cycle after a while. See if you can see it here. So that's a start. Next time we'll build on this a bit and see if we can get a decent walk cycle going. In the meantime, here's a sample of what you can do with this setup. Here I've just created a second canvas and I'm tracking the final endpoint of the three segments and using that to draw lines. I've adjusted the angle value so they're almost but not quite multiples of each other. You can see the cycle and see it vary slightly on each iteration, slowly building up an interesting looking shape. Code for this example will be in the Git repo if you want to play around with it.